Kia ora. Uh, Steve here again. You've just been taken ha through how to make a pinhole camera with Tamlin. Tamlin and I are now going to set ourselves up to make use of that incredible light capturing tool. The first thing you need to do is choose a place you can make into a dark room. It could be your bedroom. It could be a spare room that's not being used. I'm going to use the laundry. It's just ideal for this. Come inside. So what we need to make the dark room, we need some big sheets of cardboard, a pair of scissors, some tape, and if you can get one, um, a red bulb, you know, just to change over. You're going to need some sort of light. If you haven't got a red bulb, then a red light of some sort. That won't affect the paper. We've chosen a room with very few window spaces and with a tight-fitting door. So all we need to do is cover all this window up, close the door, and just check for any light coming through, and then tape those light areas. We want a completely dark room for working with our photographic papers. So I've got my trusty duct tape again, um, mm. taping up any areas that are letting in the light. You can see that we've covered our window with a big bit of cardboard. We've done a little bit of a patchwork here. And we've just got a, a little bit of uh, light coming through the keyhole. We got, can't forget that. And a little bit of light coming from underneath the door and we'll have to cover that up as well. We're here in our dark room. We've managed to tape up all the gaps where the light was coming in and it's probably looking pretty dark for you guys right now. But we're ready to load up our cameras with our photographic paper. So here we have the larger box, the 18 centimeter box. And I'm just gonna take my paper and I can actually see pretty clearly um, the camera will be capturing a lower light than what I can actually see with our red light. Um, so I can easily pop our paper on our double-sided tape. And how does that look, Steve? Good. Yeah, yeah. You can see it's sitting in there. And now... You've got to get that lid on. Popping it on. And make sure the pinhole's covered. Pinhole is covered. Yep. Now, yeah. what I also going to do is I would tape the edges closed as well just to triple make sure we're not letting any light in. We're going to make up our little processing area. We're going to need four two litre ice cream containers for our trays. It's going to be easier to use these if we cut the trays down a little bit. Um, we only really need them about half as deep as they already are. Um, and when you've got four of them cut down, you'll have uh, them laid out beside each other as in the order that we do the processing, which is developer, wash, fix, and wash. Okay, we've got our four trays. We've got our developer, where we're going to put our developer mix. We've got our first wash, we've got our fixer, and we've got our second wash. Um, if you receive in the mail some materials from us, you can either do it with the standard professional materials, uh, which we can send you in the mail if you communicate with us, or you can make your own and we'll go through the recipe for doing that uh, at home as well. Check that. Um, so if you get the developer, you're going to get 12 mils. It's uh, 1 plus 9, which means 9 times 12 um, so we're going to put in our developer in here. You can do this in the light, that doesn't matter. And we, it's good to have a darkroom space where you've got access to a tap. So, you know, the laundry's been ideal for this. And we're going to add to this 108 mils of um, water. That's pretty much 110, so I'm going to get just below the 110. Um, I'm just going to rinse out that little vial with some of that and then mix that in there. Um, and make sure that's well mixed. You know, you can use those tweezers. You're going to be using those tweezers in a minute to well mixed. So there's our developer. Um, the wash is simply water, first wash. So just put a bit of water in that first. That's first wash. It doesn't have to be too deep. Fixer, same again. This one here, 12 mils of your fixer in there. And again, one plus nine is what we're going to work to. Um, this determines, you know, the concentration also determines how long we um, have it in there. 
and we're going to rinse that out as well make sure we've got all that fixer um, in there and mix that together and then we've got our fixer as well I'm not going to use the same tweezers at the moment just use my wee ruler to give that a wee mix and then finally the last wash is simply water again um, with the last wash you can just have it here to give it its first rinse but in actual fact what you can do because it's going to last for two or three minutes it doesn't matter if you go a little bit over that um, you could actually do your wash uh, in the sink in that container with a little bit of uh, water dribbling over and have it running but we can get there in a minute we're here with our cameras loaded up with our photographic paper we've got a clear sunny bright afternoon so we're going to be setting up our cameras down here at an oceanic inlet so we've got our beautiful view out here and this is where I'm going to be setting up to capture our picture. I brought down some plasticine so that's just going to, I'm going to stick that on the bottom of the box that will just help it to stay in place because we're going to be setting these up for a few minutes and we want them to be as still as possible so that we get a clear crisp image. Okay so with with the brightness here it's a bright sunny day sort of we've got a exposure value of about 14 or 15 and we've got very sensitive paper it's got a, a speed rating an ISO rating of about between three and six so um, and then we've got our ratio between our um, focal distance from the pinhole to the paper to, uh, to the pinhole itself which gives us our f-stop the f-stop for the little red camera is comes out at about 300 and the f-stop for the big black camera comes out about 350 360 which gives us between one and two minutes with everything um, so we're going to try two minutes exposure time and see what that gives us for a start um, we just there's a wee breeze we just don't want those cameras to move um, during that time and uh, you can get an idea of what sort of field of view you're going to get if you line up the back corner of your camera here um, with the middle of the front where the pinhole is that line up will show you the edge of your picture which will be about there okay and we can do it on the other side we can line up um, the other corner down here with the middle of the camera over there so we can pick out what our field of view is somewhere across here setting up a timer on my phone for two minutes so I'll just have this sitting here now I'm going to carefully take off the lens cap of our first and fold it back. Trying just to not block the pinhole with my hand when I'm doing this and Make sure that the lens cap doesn't fly up and block the image, which I'm currently having. I'm just going to take it completely off with that yep. one. Yep. And start my timer. Ooh. It's been two minutes, so I'm going to now carefully put my lens caps back on because we, so. we want to stop exposing the film because our photo has been taken and now we'll be able to go back to the dark room and develop our photos and see what we've captured whoa back to the dark room we go to see how we've we've gone with our photos fingers crossed so now um now we've got our developer wash, fixer wash, and that's the sequence and the timing that we're going to use. We're going to now make our darkroom again, and Tamlin's going to take you through um, developing those uh, films that we've just taken out in the inlet. We're in the dark again, and so we're ready to open up our cameras, take the film out, and have a go at 
doing the developing. Mm, yeah, be careful with tape sticking to your gloves, but gloves are very important. There's our paper. <laughs> okay, here it is. I'm going to put my gloves back on because we're working with those chemicals. I'm very excited to see. Okay, also a little nervous. So I'm just going to grab my tweezers. Mm -hmm. And pop it in there. You want to make sure it's floating there Did and completely you put it covered. Glossy, like picture side down or? Glossy side um, up. And here's our result. It's a negative, that is, the light areas are dark and dark's light. This was a little underexposed, there's not so much detail. And this is negative paper. This is a paper you can use for practicing seeing any problems or getting your exposure right. Here's a greyish day, grey whitish day, but a bit of light. And we first of all, got to work out the exposure value that this day gives us. So if we come to this exposure value table, it's somewhere in the 13, 14, 15. We're going to go with 14. Then the next thing we need to know is an f-stop value. Different cameras have different f-stop values. We can work that out. So if we come down the ISO 6 column, which is the sensitivity of our paper, to 14, which is our exposure value, and across to our f-stop 360, we get 4 minutes exposure. Here's the result of that 4 minutes exposure. It's pretty much spot on. Could have gone a little bit longer. Here's three minutes exposure. Wasn't exposed enough, didn't get enough detail. And there's two minutes exposure, a complete white waste of time of paper. Here's light seeping in on the left hand side. The light, of course. And here's a piece of paper that was exposed in the light when you put in the camera. The really good paper to use is this direct positive Harman paper, which means you're going to get a finished product straight away. But its ISO is what three. On a bright day, say 16, bright sunny blue sky, and ISO 3 paper, which is the direct positive. We come down the three column for this paper till we get to the exposure value 16, and then we go across to our um, F360 and get two minutes. Here's our two minute exposure. It's beautiful finish. The top one is our two minute one, the bottom one's one minute underexposed, needed more. The top one's our two minute, bottom one, the shade came over the foreground, it was bright in the back. And here's where the camera's moved. You've got to sort out these problems before you take the pictures. Okay, we've got a bit muddy. We've been out at the inlet um, doing our photographs with our pinhole camera. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to make some homemade developer and fix it so that you can make it up in the kitchen pretty cheaply and not deal with the expense of the fancy commercial ones. Um, make it a bottle, make it dark. Um, this developer's called Caffeine. I'll put a date on it. It might not last too well, but it'll last a while in the dark and in the cool. You need citric acid powder, um, cheap coffee powder, and washing soda. But if you don't have washing soda, you can use baking soda. We've uh, used baking soda and we've cooked it in the oven at about 200 degrees centigrade for about half an hour and that will turn the baking soda into washing soda. And the reason we want washing soda, it's more caustic, it's got a higher pH, and that will activate the citric acid in the coffee to become the caffeinol developer. The other thing you want, a teaspoon, um, jug, and something to accurately measure your volumes. So we're going to uh, very quickly get one and a half teaspoons of citric acid powder. Now, for an ordinary kitchen teaspoon, it's just a heap teaspoon, so one and we'll go a half, here we go, uh, and then we want ten teaspoons of instant coffee, we're doubling, uh, we're making quite a bit, we're going to fill this whole bottle and we'll have heaps of developer uh, to do lots and lots of photography. How much did I say? Ten. One, two, I just love that coffee aroma and now we want our seven teaspoons of our washing soda that we've made so seven uh, one two don't eat this whatever you do it might smell 
really nice. Three, four, five, six, and seven. And we are going to dissolve that in 710 mils of warm water. You can dissolve and add the rest of the water because um, we... Now you can see the colour of it and you can tell already that what's going to happen with this developer is that when we use it, the um, photographic paper will get quite brown, it'll get stained. What you can do is just wash that last wash in our developing process, the second wash, just um, run it for a lot longer and the longer you run it the more of that brown will come out. Put the lid on and make sure it's well mixed and there's our developer. We've made our developer, Chateau Kipnol 93, whatever. Um, but now we need to make our fixer, um, and that's very simple, and it's back to our ocean in the house. We're going to make a saline solution as our fixer. Our good old friend salt, scales, measuring cylinder, and a container to put it in and some warm water. So, for half a litre, we want of 150 grams of salt. We're going to make a very concentrated solution. So I'm just going to get some warm, pretty warm water in here. Um, half a litre, that's pretty much half a litre, and put that in our bottle. Well, we'll put some of it in our bottle, not all of it, um, because I want to leave it some to dissolve the salt. Get our little cup, tear it. We want 150 grams, that's a lot of salt. You know, you'll remember back um, when we were doing salandi that we made 35 grams in a litre as representative of ocean seawater and this is like 10 times that, 300 grams of salt um, in a litre and there is our 150 um, and we're going to try and dissolve that in half a litre so, get as much of that dissolved as possible and then put it in our container. This doesn't have to be kept in the dark, of course. Um, this just is something that you can just keep aside ready to use. It's not going to go off. Um, you, when you use it, again, you're going to use it warmish. Same process as you've seen already in the film. Developer, wash, fixer, wash. Except this time, we need a lot longer. So when you use the developer, you're going to be putting your photograph into it for about a minute and agitate it and then leave it there for three minutes, uh, 11 minutes. So a total time of 12 minutes in this developer. Um, and every minute or so, agitate it two or three times. Just keep that um, paper moving. And then wash it with water and then in the fixer, um, at least an hour, a minimum of an hour, a bit of agitation, and then leave it overnight in the salt solution before you do your final wash. So it takes a lot longer, but um, you know, good things take time. Best of luck with your photographs and your homemade developer and fixer. And here's the result, a bit underexposed. Um, this was overnight soaking, then washed for an hour. The red is from light damage afterwards. This one, I think we've really nailed it. This was an exposure time of uh, six and a half minutes, an EV value of uh, about 14, and with the large camera, we're going to call it Storm at Sea.